Ray on W R O Y N joined inside the Shepherd Chevy Buick GMC studio is Brian Johnson of the Fulton County Community Foundation. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Paul. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. It's a nice brisk day out there. Yeah, I you just, didn't walk, did you? I did. I was Oof. commenting the sun looks nice and warm and then you walk out and it's kinda of chilly. But. Yeah, I, I I'm sorry. I couldn't walk. I don't mind walking, but not today. <laughs> But it doesn't look like even as chilly as it is, we're going to get no. a white Christmas. No. So does Santa have like an alternate setup for his He's got wheels. Sleigh, does he? Okay. Yeah. They, they drop, drop down on places okay. with no snow. So that okay. in case there is snow, we can still use the sleigh properly. Yes. Well, that sounds like a good backup plan. Always yes, concerned absolutely. About that, so. Well, hey, we've got a lot of things going on at the foundation right now. Um, usually the last show of the year we kind of do a year in review so i have a bunch of bunch of things that it was interesting as i was looking back over and remembering what we did over this last year it's been been kind of busy but yeah. um, a couple of current events that are going on that i wanted to let folks know about um, scholarships mm, it's yes. kind of kind of strange to be thinking about scholarships for the year 2022 but that's where we are. We actually have our applications available um, on our website, nicf.org. Um, if students are listening over their break and um, have um, an interest in applying, I'd encourage you to, to check that out now. The deadline is February 2nd, um, but some of the scholarships require some information that may you may need to work with other folks to get that information. But um, we have over 50 scholarships that benefit Fulton County students okay. um, in our community. And it's, it's really neat to see when you start looking at things like fields of study, um, interest while they're involved in high school, or maybe a school they're planning to go to, or a field they're planning to study. Um, there, there are quite a few scholarships that are open to a number of students. So. Um, I encourage students over the over the Christmas and New Year's break to check that out and um, get those applications completed. If you have any questions or any difficulties with the scholarships, um, Allison Heidi, our scholarship coordinator, is is always available to um, help with that. So don't hesitate to give us a call. All right. Um, wanted to do a, a thank you and a wrap up on Giving Tuesday. Of course, we, you've heard on on WROI information about. Um, things that happened that day, but um, say some congratulations to um, the Baxter family. Yes. Um, we had Leanne Pollock, the daughter of Fran and Park Baxter, and granddaughter of, of Ernest and Alice Baxter um, yep. join us. But um, we awarded the, the Baxter family the, the Lifetime Philanthropy Award. Um, of course, that family has been involved in, in creating so many things. Um, they've created eight funds within the foundation, also done a number of things throughout the community. Um, we're involved um, supporting area youth, area needs, downtown businesses, things like that. And, and here's your trivia. I said this would probably come up at, at some point in the future. Which was the very first fund created at the community foundation, Paul? Oh, well, I know it was a Baxter family fund. It, it was the Baxter Inc. fund. Very uh, good. Well, I, 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 think that's, I think that's enough to get credit for it. So, but uh, the Baxter family actually created the very first fund, which is a community fund at the Community Foundation. So, um, congratulations to the Baxter family and, and thank you um, for setting that example for so many people in our community. Um, it's really neat to, to honor their legacy and see how that will will continue to go on so um, we also had some matches available during the event um, we're matching gifts to the lake manitow association sustainability and maintenance fund and also promise indiana 529 fund which helps area youth create uh, 529 college savings accounts so both of those funds were offered um, five thousand dollars each and met and exceeded those matches so thank you to everybody who who gave to those um, funds looking at um, Lake Manitow as our, really our greatest natural resource in our community. Yeah. Um, we're excited to, to see how this fund will help ensure that that continues to be the case. And also um, when we think about saving for the future, um, 
students planning for college, it's never too early to start saving, and that's exactly what a 529 plan does. So um, it will help future generations be able to afford education. Um, so thank you to everybody who donated to that. During the event, we had um, almost $99,000 in donations given wow. by the community. So um, it, it's always an overwhelming to see to see that support and see how the community um, supports needs. And, and the neat thing is with, with the Community Foundation working with endowments, these gifts that were given this November will continue to give um, forever in our community. So yeah, it's great to great to see that. Thank you to everybody who stopped by. Um, thank you to everybody who participated. We had some folks that gave online, um, and, and thank you to everybody who participated in that. So we'll start working on plans for 2022 for Giving right. Tuesday. Be a, be another exciting time. So, yes, it will. Um, wanted to highlight a few recent grants that the Community Foundation has um, been able to make. Um, we have a few that um, were with organizations providing some really some basic health and human service needs. Um, we had a grant that went to um, Food Finders for six thousand okay. um, dollars. Food Finders food bank supports um, a lot of our area food pantries. Um, they are also the organization that provides um, the mobile food pantries when they come to the community. I know Mill Creek Church has been very in, involved in supporting that. Thank you to Mill Creek um, and, and different organizations throughout the community. They've had some in the Caston area, they've had some in the Kiwana area, Akron area, um, and also in Rochester. So um, we provided $6,000 to Food Finders to help for 2022 mobile food pantries and some of the needs of their organization. Um, another interesting one, when, when we think about some basic um, human needs, um, Area 5 Agency on, Agent, on Aging um, provides what they call an adult guardianship and advocacy program. If somebody, if somebody needs assistance and, and needs, um, a lot of times we think of guardians as children. Right. People needing guardians as children. Right. Um, well, what happens if you're an adult in that situation? Yeah. Um, there's not as many resources. So Area 5 has been working with this program and, and helping provide these services for, for folks in our community, um, a really neat program um, for when that's needed. Um, another thing that we've been able to support um, is a program through Fulton County Hope called Hope for the Homeless. Mm. Um, I think a lot of times when we hear the word homeless we think well that's not necessarily here but it is it just looks different it's not it's not the standing on the street corner seeing somebody living on the street right it is the maybe folks living out of their car or in a tent yeah um, and this is a program that um, that has really been developed by a few individuals involved with Fulton County Hope that helps folks get into a better living arrangement. Um, they don't necessarily pay for ongoing expenses, but maybe things like first month's rent or a deposit. Um, and then once folks get in, they can, they can afford to make sure that they stay in these things. Because you think about if, you, if you're homeless, if you don't have an address, there's a lot of things that you don't qualify for. Yes. Think about even if you're going to apply for a job, what's one of the first questions they ask you? What's your address? What's your address? Yeah. You don't have an address, that makes, that's a significant barrier. So um, we've been able to provide $12,000 for that program and to help make it, um, make it really successful. And thanks to Virgil Smith and all the folks that have really helped provide that program, um, when, you, when you start thinking about the numbers of families that have been served um, through this, it's pretty amazing. And, and conversation I had um, a couple weeks ago was they were able to help find somebody in an apartment that literally was living in a tent. Oh, wow. So you think about a tent on a day that it's 25, 25 degrees, degrees, Yeah. not so comfortable. No, no, not so, at all. Um, and then the last grant that I wanted to mention was um, one that we just awarded recently was to the Fulton County Public Library. They're okay. in the process of doing a st new strategic plan. 
Um, and so it was wonderful to um, be able to help with that. We provided $7,000. They're working with a consultant to um, do that plan. And just a little plug, if you haven't already, um, on the library's website, or I've seen it around in numerous locations, they are asking for community feedback, so they have a brief survey. So if you are a library patron, or if you use services, or think of something that the library could be useful for, please take the time to, to fill out the survey. Um, and let the library that what they're looking for is how can they best serve the community and so feedback from the community is very vital in this process so um, please take a few minutes I think the survey takes about 10-15 minutes to complete yeah. um, once you get through it and it will it will help the library um, know what kind of services they need to provide yeah um, I think it's it's neat the fact that there's such a diversity of services. You, you think of a library when I was growing up, it was kind of the place you went to to get books. books. Yeah. You made sure you were quiet while you were there. You didn't you make any noise. Old and, newspapers you um, could look through. I had a conversation with one of the members of the staff the other day and they were talking about a Nerf war. Yes. I'm thinking, wow. Yeah. That's that, pretty cool. You didn't do that one. No. I, even when I was a kid, no. it was, and, you get too rowdy, it was shh. And right now I'm carrying around about five books on my phone. Yeah. that I've checked out from the library. I mean, just services like that are pretty cool to, to have available to our community. So um, thank you to the library for all the services you provide for us. So, okay, so I have a list of stuff. Okay. This is kind of our year in review. All so right. I'll see, how I can, see if I can get through this list without stumbling. Hmm. Good luck. So, um, it's kind of interesting looking at our community support and impact grants over the past year. Um, we've been able to provide over $250,000 in support to different projects. Wow. Um, it's really neat to, to see that and just going through some of the list. Um, Cy Iota's Eye, their banner contest. If you've seen those banners hanging in downtown and in areas around that were from local school yeah. students. Um, that's a K through 12 program, Caston, Rochester, Tippecanoe Valley. Um, and then the students can show off their artwork. Yeah. Um, not only in downtown Rochester, but some of the libraries, the Kiwana, Akron, Rochester libraries have been able to display some of the artwork. Um, so a neat program there. Science Central. Um, this is an organization that provides some, some hands-on programming and some um, STEM programming for our area schools. They've worked with, with the Rochester School Corporation over the past um, few months to provide some, some additional hands-on and virtual learning for students. Um, Camp We Can, that's one of those um, things that is a really unique opportunity for, for individuals that may have special needs um, to be able to experience camp as, as everyone experiences it. Um, they needed some, some help with some storage trailers, so we were able to provide a grant for that. Habitat for Humanity, just down the road from our office, yeah. um, they had the opportunity to be donated a home that had suffered a fire. Um, they needed some expenses, some, some funding to help prepare that lot for a future build, and so they were able to, to remove the home, and, and the lot is ready for a future family to come in and be able to build the next habitat home. It's kind of kind of neat to see um, how many of those homes have impacted our community already. So um, a new organization to us, Intrepid Phoenix. Okay. It was um, an organization that helps provide some recovery services and um, some fitness programs. Um, have have worked with the local Ace Fitness here, um, have look, worked with some personal trainers. Um, to provide support for folks that are in recovery programs. Um, the Beeman Home, that is a home for um, women and children that may have been involved with a domestic violence situation. Oh, okay. um, a great resource for our um, community to be able to help folks get out of those situations that may either be unsafe or, or not a positive situation. Um, Recovery Cafe just down the road from us in the old Community Foundation office. Um, a neat organization that's providing space and, and time and training and support for folks who are, are dealing with some sort of addiction. We always think of addiction as 
a substance, yeah. drugs, it's, things like that. But it's really, really much bigger than that. It's, it it's addiction. It's mental health. It's it's all of these things wrapped up. And this organization has really been able to provide some really neat services, um, supporting folks in those kinds of needs. The Outlet Youth Center, another project that's as long as I remember our community, we've always said, hey, we need a youth center. Yeah. Well, you know what? Now we have a youth center. Um, a neat organization that's that's providing some services to youth and, and some really neat programming, some fun programming. Um, encourage students, if you have some time this um, break, stop by and see the folks at the outlet and have some fun. So um, another organization that's kind of interesting, Servants at Work, or SAWS, this is an organization that works with local um, groups and local individuals that need um, help with things like ramps for mobility to get in, in and out of their home. Um, we've been able to provide some, some services there and I know like our local Lions Clubs have worked with this organization as well to, to help um, provide that mobility um, for folks that need it. Um, another organization, the Harbory, a, a gathering space over in the Kiwana area that have had um, concerts, um, different, different community events that um, really provide some enrichment for the Kiwana area. Um, Main Street Revitalization Facade Program, I, I put that on there because we were able to help um, provide some support for that program um, through the Times Theater. Um, the theater the front of the theater looks a little bit different now than it, it did on January 1st of this year. Some, some um, repaired facade, some new windows, um, a new look, and, and really bringing it back to kind of a classic look. So um, need to be able to support that program and, and all of the, through that, um, all of the, the businesses that were able to make improvements to storefronts um, downtown. It's really great to see that um, thanks to the downtown partnership and all the work that that Harry and his crew put in for that. Um, Kiwana Fall Festival, need I say more? A lot of good time for families. Uh, right. Very, very um, cost effective um, for people of all economic statuses. Um, Macmillan Health is an organization that provides some preventative health education for folks in our community, youth primarily. Um, they sometimes work in the schools. I know they've been partnering with the Outlet Youth Center on some programs, so I'm kind of learning how to, how to do those preventative health things. Um, the Culver Youth Club, we have, Culver is kind of an interesting school district. About a quarter yeah. of the students that go there are from Fulton County. Um, they have a youth club, so they are able to provide a, a new sensory room for some of their students that oh, cool. maybe maybe they're stressed and they need a place to relax and unwind. This this room would let them do that. Um, coming back to um, recovery services, celebrate recovery. Um, we've been able to support them a couple of different ways. One of the ways they were able to have some of their folks go through a peer recovery coach training. Um, and had some folks that were certified in that. It's neat to, to see how that organization has provided um, expanding services throughout the year. Nickel Plate Music and Art Festival that happened right here on 8th Street. A yeah, bunch it was of a fun good one. time. Um, heard some local bands. I know it was, it was a warm day, so yes. drinks were at a premium that day, but um, it was neat to see a lot of, of young people being exposed to music and art and um, having a chance to learn a little bit more about something they may be interested in. Yeah. Um, a new thing, and this is, can we say, as heard on WROI earlier, the Safe Haven Baby Box. Sure can. Um, that the um, Knights of Columbus partnered with the fire department in the city of Rochester, um, an opportunity to help provide a service that may be of, of need to families and mothers. Um, the Akron Lions Club. Um, if you've ever been over for one of their fish fries, you know they have mm -hmm. probably the best fish in the area. We are yes. able to help provide a, um, support for them to help purchase an automatic breading machine, and so they're oh, cool. able to actually raise more dollars through the fish fries to be able to support even more community needs. Um, a big one that happened was Richland Restoration Park. 
Yeah, that's a new, big problem. New County is. Park is open to the public and <clears throat> encourage folks to check that out. It's a really neat opportunity for some outdoor recreation, some nice trails out there if you just want to go for a walk somewhere. Um, and there are more plans for that park in the near future. Um, Fulton County Drug Court, kind of an interesting grant. Um, this is, this is a, a project that really helps folks get back on their feet not just a okay you've been in trouble here's your sentence it's right. help them work through that help them recover from that um, kind of along those same lines Kosciuszko County Shelter for Abuse which is um, the parent organization for the Beeman home um, has a rapid rehousing program for, for families that have dealt with domestic abuse um, Rochester Chamber of Commerce. We helped with the banner for the chili cook-off. I'm yes. so glad to be able to go to the 2021 chili cook-off, a car show, and pretty amazing event thanks to the chamber and the blacktop cruisers. And I think I heard rumors there were over 700 cars that showed up that day. It was a beautiful day and yeah, that's good chili. And, um, really neat thing to be able to uh, be a part of. Another grant that we were able to provide just recently was to help with the construction of a gazebo at the Butterfly Garden at Lakeside Park that's yeah. just down from the boat launch. Yeah, I've seen that uh, being built. It's yeah. very nice. It's a, a nice, another one of those relaxing spots if you just need a spot to stop and yeah. check out. Um, some other organizations, I'm going to go through these fairly quick, but Shop with a Cop, Fulton County Hope, Hoosiers Feeding the Hungry, United Ministries, Area 5 Agency on Aging. Food Finders, the Public Library, and the Ladybug Foundation are just some of the organizations that we've been able to support. Um, looking at some projects, um, the Road to Recovery event was one that we were able to bring together a number of organizations dealing with recovery um, opportunities. Um, that happened in, in June and was a really great time. Um, the Fulton County Women's Giving Circle, able to provide $9,000 in grants to organizations. Um, we mentioned the grants to the Outlet Youth Center, but we've also been able to help as they're going through a process of strategic planning. Okay. Um, kind of looking at where they are, where they're going, and how they get there. Um, mobile Food Pantry, something that, that our board got involved with for the first time was volunteering outside of our organization, and we were able to help staff a couple of the mobile food pantries throughout the community. And something to mark on your calendars for 2022, um, we've been working to organize a Bridges Out of Poverty workshop. Hmm. Um, we'll be coming out with more information here in the near future, but um, kind of kind of helping folks and, and looks at the subject of generational poverty. Okay. Uh, and then just a few new funds that I wanted to mention. Um, the Baxter Pollock Family Engineering Scholarship. We talked about the Baxter family. Um, of course, Fran passed away at the end of last year. Um, but her and her family created this fund to help area students who are interested in the field of engineering. Ah. One we already mentioned, the Lake Manitow Association Maintenance and Sustainability Fund. Keep, lake, keep the lake nice. Um, Galen Smith is a very familiar name in our community. If yes. you think about Galen, you think about teaching and basketball and sports of all kind. Yep. Um, the Galen Smith Memorial Scholarship Fund was created by a number of his former athletes. Um, the Amber Dyson Scholarship Fund, unfortunately Amber passed away and um, she was very involved in the medical field and so this scholarship will help um, future students um, that are interested in, in some medical field. And then a very familiar name to our community, um, Terry Moore, Joe and Terry Moore Family Fund. Yeah. Um, supporting a number of organizations in our community that their family has been involved with. So, so those are just a few of the things that we can get on our list here that um, celebrate what has been done over the past year. And I always say, we, we talked about the donations on Giving Tuesday. None of this would be possible without our donors. Right. And so a, a big thank you to our donors for making all of these great things in our community possible. It's, it's part of working together as a community and, and thank you for um, believing in our community and supporting needs 
Um, in some cases, these donors may have given to a community fund and they didn't realize that they were going to be supporting all these needs at some point in the future, but that's the, that's the beauty of it when we think about yeah. we can support things in a very significant way. So, so again, thank you to everybody for donating. Thank you for um, the continued support, and we look forward to 2022 with what will be coming up. So, And just a reminder, scholarship applications, NICF.org deadline is February 2nd. We'll have another reminder next month about that, but yep. get working on that now if you're interested in applying. So, Well, if you have questions about anything that we talked about today, you can reach out to us. Of course, you can find us on our website, NICF.org. Keep an eye on our Facebook page, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, you can give us a call, 574 3223. I'm proud of myself. I remembered all 10 digits. <laughs> or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about how we can help. And if you're looking for that last minute gift for somebody that has everything, maybe a gift in their honor to a fund yep. that's special to them, or if you're still still thinking about end of year giving, it's not too late. We'd, we'd love to be able to help you make that a possibility. So. All right. Well, Brian, thank you very much. I uh, look forward to talking to you again in January. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, sir. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you, too.